Hello everyone. In today's lesson, we are going to look at complex numbers. Now, let's begin with the general quadratic equation that is ax squared plus bx plus c, everything is equal to zero. Where a and b are the coefficients of terms including x and c is the constant term. Now we learned that the roots of the above equation are given by x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divide by a 2a okay now it has real roots for discriminant that is b squared minus 4ac when it is either greater than or equal to a zero now i'm having a question what happens if the discriminant d, which is b squared minus 4ac, is less than a zero? In today's lesson, we are going to base our discussion on such scenario. Example number one. Solve x squared plus 2x plus 26, everything is equal to 0. Now, first things first, we have to first compare this quadratic equation with the general quadratic equation that is ax squared plus b x plus c everything is equal to a zero we realize that the coefficient on x squared is one and the coefficient on x that is b is equal to two and the coefficient sorry the constant term which is c is equal to 26 therefore the value of x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 26. Everything divided by 2 times 1. Implying that x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root 2 squared that is 4 minus 4 times 1 that is 4 times 26 that is 104 divide by a 2 okay so upon simplification we have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 100 out of a 2. Now let's get our calculator and place the square root of negative 100. What do we obtain? We realize that on our screen, after placing negative 100, the result is math error, implying that we have a big problem to solve. And the question is, what results that math error? It is very simple. We are clear that the square root of 100, that is a 10. But after applying a negative 1 times 100, we are obtaining something which is not good. Therefore, the component that is negative 1, it is the one which causes problems, okay? So, to simplify that, 
we are going to introduce a new number called i. And what is i? i is the imaginary number and is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay? Implying that the value of x or the values of x will be equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 100, everything divided by the 2. Okay? Now, from SADs, if I have the SAD of A multiplied by B, I separate this by taking the SAD of A multiplied by the SAD of B. Therefore, X is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the SAD of negative 1 times the square root of 100, everything divided by a 2. We agreed that the square root of negative 1 is i, okay? So we shall have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus, what is the square root of 100? That is 10, okay? Multiplied with the square root of negative 1, which is i, everything divided by a 2. Now for the above to be true, we shall say either x is equal to negative 2, we pick a negative, and everything divided by 2. Therefore, x1 is equal to by 2, 1, by 2, that is negative 1, by 2, 1, by 2, that is negative 5. Therefore, x1 is equal to negative 1 minus 5i. Or, we say x2 is equal to, the other round we picked a negative, meaning that this round we are going to pick a positive. So that is negative 2 plus 10i divided by a 2. By 2, 1. By 2, negative 1. By 2, that is a 5. So x2 is equal to negative 1 plus 5i. Example number two. Solve five x squared plus two x plus two everything is equal to zero. What does that mean? The value of a is equal to five. The value of B is equal to 2, and the value of C is equal to 2 as well. Implying that the values of X, or the solution to the above equation, is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 5 times 2. Everything being divided by... 2 times 5. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 5, that is 20. 20 times 2, that is a 40. Divide by 2 times 5, that is a 10. We simplify. So x is equal to negative 2 either plus or minus the square root. What is 4 minus a 40? That is a negative 36, everything divided by a 10. So when we place our calculators, the square root of negative 36, it gives us a what? A math error. Implying that we shall say x is equal to negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 36, everything divided by a 10. Implying that x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 36, that is a 6, and the square root of negative 1, that is i, everything divided by 
10. For the above to be true, either x1 is equal to negative 2, we first pick a negative, so we have minus 6i divided by a 10. By 2, that is 5, by 2, negative 1, by 2, that is negative 3. So x1 is equal to negative 1 minus 3i, everything divided by a 5. Or x2 is equal to negative 2. The other time round we picked a negative, implying that for this time round we are going to pick a positive. 6i divided by a 10. By 5, sorry, by 2 that is 5. By 2 that is negative 1. By 2 that is a 3. So x2 is equal to negative 1 plus 3i out of 5. Okay. Example number 3. Solve z squared minus 4z plus a 7 is equal to 0. Pause your video please and get the values of z. Welcome back. We realize that the value of z1 is equal to 2 minus i root 3. And the second value of z is equal to 2 plus i root 3. Now it is also clear that z is equal to x plus i y. Let's see z1. For z1, I have 2 minus i root 3, whereby x, if I compare the two, x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 3. Can we define a complex number now? Now, we shall conclude that a complex number z is any number with the two parts, that is, the rule part, which is x, and the imaginary part, which is y. Okay? If we have z as 2 minus 3i, what does that mean? The rule part of z is equal to 2, and the imaginary part of z is equal to negative 3. i identifies that the part which is imaginary is negative 3. If I have z as 2i, what does that mean? z is purely imaginary. Why do I say that it is purely imaginary? It is simple. The root part of z is equal to a 0. So, we can rewrite z as z is equal to 0 plus 2i. If I have my z as 3, I'm going to say that z is purely real because the imaginary part of z is equal to 0. I can rewrite z as z is equal to 3 plus 0 i. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video for more about math. Let's meet in the next lesson. Goodbye.